The last bit of work I was doing this weekend uh, is tidying up some of the more analogue um, mechanical machines. So beforehand I showed this um, linear gear method to uh, adding two numbers where you have a gear in between that rolls against two linear gears to take the average of the motion and then you can put another beam on top of that that moves against to effectively have a very straightforward adder. I wanted to tidy that up a bit, this is a really messy one, so I first um, tried doing it with um, well then having the, the, the um, linear gears uh, facing in with the gear between them, I wanted to try it sort of facing up because it's easier to build that in Lego. So this one does that and it has a gear acting against another gear here to reverse the motion. So that's effectively taking the average of the two inputs there, so both of them move together, all goes up. And um, in the end I thought that was a, I could need that, need that even further by just having them tucked in on these um, very straightforward uh, linear gears that you can just put a, a notch on. And then I'm just going to have this here so you could say that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this would be from 0 to what, 10 I guess. And then uh, 11 actually. So that's going up to that's halfway, that's all the way, that's coming down. So that's a very simple adder. I did some more complicated ones as well. I did a variable speed adder which is a Probably not going to be too good at explaining because I'm a bit tired, but um, here you've got a, a, um, a belt or a, um, a wheel in the middle with a belt on it or a tyre on it that's actually acting against two cones. And as it's at this end, it's transferring the motion from the thick end of one cone to the thin end of the other. And if I move it down, it's the thin end of one cone to the thick end of the other. So it's changing the ratio of motion. So if I have this over here and I turn this, say, half. Let's call this one the input, and if I turn that halfway, you can see the output's gone round almost three quarters. And that's because it's on the thick end here, which is turning more of that one because that's on the thin end. But if I move it this way, and I move it all uh, halfway around again, you see it moves a lot less, just over a quarter. So that's a proper um, variable speed. I wouldn't call it a gearbox, but you can do variable speed stuff with it. And that led me to making an old style uh, mechanical computer integrator. So this is where you have a, a spinning uh, plate with a wheel on top and you move that along to take the amount of motion. So what's happening is in the centre it's not moving at all, hardly moving at all. And as you move it out beyond the zero position it starts to move more and more and more. And they used to use this in mechanical computers to integrate um, a function. So let's say for example uh, you had a Let's try and reset it. Um, this here is turning constantly on a motor, so that's kind of your time source. So that's time ticking along. And the distance along here is um, your input of that function. So if I try to simulate a sort of sine wave, as this is turning round, that's going that way, and it's coming back, back again, and straight through. And you can see what's happening at the end here is this is kind of doing the same sinusoidal motion and that's effectively showing that the um, I can't remember what it is exactly but the, the integral of a, a sine is a cosine I believe or minus cosine so um, that's for simple summing but it's also again a, effectively a variable gearbox so that's quite a fun one to build